In this video, we are going to take the boring and somewhat clunky default Tmux experience to the next level. We'll build a clean and simple configuration from scratch with sensible settings, a nicer color theme, a clean UI and seamless navigation between Tmux and NeoVim. We will also set up session persistence so that your work survives a system reboot. In part 1, we covered the essentials, what Tmux is and how to use it. If you're new to Tmux, I recommend starting there before jumping into this one. Having said that, let's dive in. In order to customize Tmux, we need to create a configuration file. Tmux will look for the configuration file in any of the locations that I show now on the screen. Personally, I prefer to have all my configuration files in the .config directory, so let's create the Tmux configuration there now. To create the configuration file, let's create the Tmux directory inside of the .config directory, and in here, let's create a tmux.conf file. And now with NeoVim, let's actually open up this file. Here I want to add the following two options. This is to enable true color support. Next, let's also add some general settings. I like to use a system clipboard when we copy something from Tmux. I also prefer to have the option to use the mouse if I want to. The status interval option refreshes the Tmux status bar every 3 seconds. This is down from 15 seconds by default. This will come in handy later. And lastly, when exiting out of a Tmux session, I prefer to stay in Tmux because I might have multiple sessions running instead of exiting completely out of Tmux. Next, I would like to remap the prefix key, and we can do this by setting these options. So if you remember from the first video, the default prefix key that we can use to initialize Tmux commands is command plus B. This is not the most intuitive shortcut in my opinion. I prefer to use control space. This is because in NeoVim there's a very similar concept called the leader key, which also initializes commands in NeoVim, and I map this command to space. So I feel that this is most consistent. In NeoVim I use space to initialize commands, and in Tmux I use control space to initialize Tmux commands. So how this works is we first unbind the control B prefix key, and then we set a new prefix control space. After having made changes to your Tmux config, you need to refresh the tmux configuration file in order to apply the changes. There is a command for this, but I feel it's helpful to have a key bind to access it more easily. So let's add the following to our configuration. We unbind anything that is currently attached to the R key, and then we rebind the R key to the source file command with our tmux config file. Alright, now let's remap a few more things. If you remember from part 1, the shortcut to split a pane horizontally and vertically are prefix percentage sign and prefix double quote. And those are not the most intuitive shortcuts in my opinion. So let's add the following alternative maps here. So to split the pane horizontally, we unbind the percentage key and in its place we rebind the backslash key. Note that I put two backslashes here. This is because backslash is a special character that needs to be escaped. So if we press prefix and backslash, then the split window command will be executed and it will be executed with the dash H option and the dash C option. The C stands for the current working directory, and to this option we pass the pane current path variable. This variable contains the path of the currently active pane, so what this means is that if we split a window into two panes, the new pane will have the same working directory as the currently active pane. And then we do pretty much the same thing for the vertical split. So to split a window vertically, we unbind the double quote character and in its place we use the dash symbol. Alright, the next option is to allow the same behavior of opening a new terminal in the same path as the current active pane, also if we open a new window. So if we create a new window, then I also want to be in the same working directory. If we don't provide this option, then new windows and new panes will always be opened in the home directory and you need to navigate back from there to your project working directory. Alright, something that's also really useful is the ability to resize panes. So what these commands do is, if we press prefix and J, K, L and H, so the Vim navigation keys, they will add 5 pixels to the currently active pane in the direction that you type with these keys. The last keybind here, prefix M, maximizes the currently active pane. Alright, now let's actually save the configuration that we have so far to make sure that everything is working. So I will save the file, exit out of NeoVim, and here let's start a new Tmux session. Let's call it sesh1. To make sure everything is working, let's navigate into the Tmux directory, and here let's create a new split. 
So if you recall, the newly remapped prefix key is now control space. So let's press that now and follow it up with a backslash. As you can see it worked, the prefix key got accepted and also the backslash key map got accepted. Also note that the working directory of our split is the same as the working directory of the previous split. And if we create a new window with prefix C, then again we are still in our tmux config directory. Let's also test if resizing split works. So prefix H increases the size and prefix L decreases it. And the same should also work in the up and down direction with J and K. Awesome, then let's close this and open up again our tmux configuration file. Now from within tmux, here I will go to the bottom and insert a few more options to enhance the tmux copy mode. The first option allows us to navigate with Vim motions, the second one allows us to select text with V, and the third one allows us to yank text just like in Vim using Y. And the command that is going to be used for copying is pbcopy. PB copy might be Mac specific, I'm not completely sure. If you're on a different operating system, you might want to use a different command here. And lastly, when we drag using the mouse in copy mode, we want to stay inside of copy mode. Now I've mentioned copy mode a couple of times. Let me quickly demonstrate what this means. So let's save this configuration file and let's refresh the config file by pressing prefix R. This is also a key map that we set up earlier. Now with prefix backslash, we create a new split. Now I want to run some kind of command that I know will give me some kind of output or error. So let me try to run python pip install command and I want to install a package that I know does not exist. Alright, so now I'm getting some output here. And now let's say I want to copy some of this output. This is where tmux command mode comes in. We can enter tmux command mode by pressing prefix opening brace. Now you can see that the cursor turned into this block and now I can use Vim motions to navigate out of the command prompt. So as you can see I'm kind of now inside of this output here and now using V I can highlight parts and I can even use Vim motions to navigate faster. Once I've selected the part that I want to copy I can press Y to yank it and this brings me also back into the command prompt. And here I could paste the copied section. Or I could paste it somewhere else, it's copied to the clipboard. But for now let's close this pane again and add a few more options here. You might have noticed that the numbering of panes and windows in tmux starts at 0. I find this a bit counterintuitive because 0 and 1 are not located next to each other on the keyboard. So I prefer to have the numbering of my windows and panes start at 1. And this can be enabled simply with the following option. Base index to 1 pane base index also to 1 and we want to automatically renumber windows when one is closed. For example if we have 5 windows open and we close the third one, we don't suddenly want to have a gap between 2 and 4, instead I would like the windows to be renumbered from 1 to 4. So let's also save this. For this change to apply we might need to restart tmux. So I'm gonna exit out of NeoVim and run tmux kill server. And now let's create Again a new session, let's also call it session 1. And now we can see in the tmux status bar that our first window number is 1. And if I create a new window it's 2, 3 and so on. Let's navigate back into our tmux config directory and reopen the tmux config file. Next I would like to add a few tmux plugins. Plugins give us additional functionalities that are not included by tmux by default. In order to install plugins we need a plugin manager. The most common tmux plugin manager is called tpm. This is the github repository and if we scroll down a little bit you can find the installation command that we need to run. So let's copy this right here. Let's go back into the terminal and go into our second window and here let's just paste this command and run it. Alright that was really quick, let's go back into our window with our tmux configuration. Let's go back to the github repository. And here we can find a couple of commands that we need to include in our configuration. So let's copy them from here. Let's go back into our configuration file. Let's go to the bottom and insert them here. So we initialize the tpm plugin. This one is adding a plugin here. We don't really need it. And in the same manner as proposed by the comments here, we can add 
different plugins from different GitHub repos. And then there's this line to initialize the plugin manager, which always needs to be kept at the bottom of our config file. Then I would like to add the following plugins here. The first plugin here is called Vim Tmux Navigator. This plugin allows us to seamlessly navigate between Tmux panes and NeoVim. For this to work, it also needs to be installed in our NeoVim configuration. A side effect of this plugin is that we can now also navigate panes without using the prefix key. We can just hold down Ctrl and press HJKL to navigate between the splits in Tmux and also in NeoVim, and we don't need to press the prefix key to navigate between Tmux panes. The Resurrect plugin allows us to persist Tmux sessions even after a system reboot, and the Continuum plugin automatically saves our Tmux sessions every 15 minutes, so we don't need to worry about saving them manually. The last plugin on the list is one that I open sourced myself. It's a very simple utility that shows you your current CPU and memory utilization in your status bar. Okay, now to install these plugins, we need to save the file, exit out of Tmux, kill the Tmux server, and restart a new session. Now if we press prefix and capital I, this triggers the installation of TPM and all the other plugins. Looks like everything went smoothly. Let's press enter and go back into the tmux configuration directory and reopen the tmux configuration file. Now let's test the vim tmux navigator plugin. So I create a new split and by holding down Ctrl and H and L I can jump between those splits and I don't need to press prefix anymore. And if I create another split in NeoVim then I can navigate between those splits and tmux as though they were one program. Okay, let me close this again. Also the vim split. Now let's save the session with prefix control s. Now it said that the tmux environment was saved. With prefix d, let's detach from it. Let's kill the tmux server. Let's open up tmux with a default session. Okay, now we can see the session is called zero. And now if I run prefix control r, our previously saved tmux session will be resurrected. So whenever we shut down our system with prefix control r, we can bring back the last saved tmux environment that we were working in. One more thing, to make sure that all the contents inside the panes are captured and also to enable continuum to continuously save the tmux environment, we need to add the following two options after instantiating the plugins. At this point, you might be wondering, where is the CPU and memory usage information? Currently, we don't see it because the plugin exposes variables, but we still need to tell Tmux where to display this information. To display this information on the right side of the Tmux status bar, we can use the status right option. So let's add that now. So to this option, we can pass a string, and then whatever the string is will get displayed on the right side of the Tmux status bar. So I have an icon here that resembles a CPU and another one that resembles memory. And then I'm placing there the CPU variable and the memory variable which get replaced with the current memory and CPU usage. And essentially this plugin refreshes this data every time the Tmux status bar gets updated. And if you recall from earlier, there was this one option, status interval 3, which meant that the status bar gets updated every 3 seconds. So every 3 seconds our CPU and memory usage gets updated. Now let's save this and reload our configuration file with prefix r. And now we can see the CPU and memory usage data on the right side of the Tmux status bar. Just for illustrative purposes, I could really write anything here. If I save this and refresh, then this will get reflected in the Tmux status bar. For now, let's remove this again and start adding a few more options to customize the appearance of the status bar. The following option centers the Tmux windows. Let me demonstrate this real quick. Now you see that the windows are shown in the middle of the Tmux status bar. And I also like to add the following two options, status left length and right length. Those add a little bit more padding to the right and left side of the status bar, so we can have longer session names and display more information on the right hand side. Now the fastest way to get a good looking status bar is to simply use a plugin and install it just like the other plugins we installed previously. If you want to get some inspiration, I would highly recommend this GitHub repository. In this repo, you can find a lot of tutorials, cheat sheets, configuration snippets, and also you have themes here. And if you like any one of these themes, as I mentioned, you can install them like any other plugin. Catpuccine is a really popular one. 
If you install this one, your Tmux status bar will look like this. But personally, I like to keep things quite minimalist and simple, so I don't even have a color theme installed. Also, I wanted to make sure that the colors I'm using in my Tmux status bar match exactly the colors that I'm using in my Vim theme. So I went to the Vim themes GitHub repository and inspected a bit the code. And here I found the exact color codes that are used in the Vim theme that I'm using. So inside of my Tmux configuration, I defined a few variables with these exact colors. So I have this dark gray for the background, then I have this light gray for the foreground, basically the default text shown in Tmux. Then I have the session foreground, I would like to have this green tone for the session text. Then I define some colors for the session selection foreground and background. This refers to the session selection menu. Right now we have this yellow kind of background and I would like to have this in blue instead of yellow. Then the text for the active window should have this cyan or light blue kind of color and the border of the active pane should be light gray. So if I create a new pane, then you can see that there's a border separating the two panes. And currently the green color indicates which pane we are currently in, but I prefer to have this in light gray. All right, now we have these constants defined and we can now use them in our Tmux options. For example, let's add an option here to set our background color. So we set status style BG is equal to, and then we use the BG variable from here. So let's save our config file and reload our config. And now as you can see, our status bar turned gray. Now let's also change the style of the session text. So here what we do is we target the left side of the status bar and then we say the foreground should be equal to the session foreground color that we defined, so this greenish color. We want the text to be bold and the background color should be equal to the background color, so the dark gray. And then the text itself that we see should have this terminal kind of symbol and then we have the S format string. So these hashtag characters, there's S and there are a few more, they stand for different components of Tmux. S stands for the session name and basically this represents a placeholder for the session name. The details of this and all these different Tmux placeholders would be out of the scope for this video, but if you're curious, you can read more on this in the format section of the Tmux wiki where they explain everything in more detail. Okay, for now let's save this and reload our config. Now as you can see the session name turned green, we have this terminal icon prefixing it and the text turned bold. In the same way we can change the appearance of our windows and the window numbers. So let me paste this right here. So this option right here, window status current format, refers to the middle section of our Tmux status bar. And here what we are saying is that we want the foreground color to be equal to the active window foreground, so this cyan color. The background should be equal to default. Default just means that it's a transparent background, so if the window status current format is transparent, then basically the color of the Tmux status bar can shine through. And then again on the right hand side we have a placeholder capital I for the window number and capital W for the window name. And we want to prefix the currently active window with this dot icon here. So now if we save this and reload our config, now you can see that the currently active window is indicated in Cyan and if we switch the window then we see the color moves and also the dot icon moves along with it. But now we have this very annoying dash symbol here next to the second window. This is how Tmux indicates the last active window. But we can overwrite this with the following options. Windows status format, this is kind of the default status and we don't want to have this dot icon either. And then we have the style of the last window status. So let's save it with these options, let's reload our config, and now as you can see the dash character disappeared. Now I'm also going to add the following two options, this changes the appearance of the pane status border. Let me save this real quick, we're just changing the colors here. Now if I split the window, now you can see the currently active window is shown with a grey indicator instead of a green one. Okay, let's close this. All right, that's pretty much it. So now also if we open the sessions menu, you can see that we get a blue selector color. And now the Tmux status bar looks so much better and cleaner in my opinion. All right, if you stuck around until now, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you found this useful. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing and see you next time for more.